This is the Asus RT-AX88U Pro, a Wi-Fi 6 router that offers two multi-gigabit ports, a more powerful processor than its predecessor, and it does support both AI mesh and some of the gaming features, which are usually reserved for the ROG series. That does sound uncomfortably close to the GTX 6000, and the teardown that I did in a previous video does confirm that they're very close to being the same device. So what exactly is the point of the Asus RTX 88U Pro? The router does support WPA3, there's AI Protection Pro, as well as the advanced parental control. Asus also advertises the upgraded VPN features, which include VPN Fusion, WireGuard, and Instant Guard. But all of these features are also present on the GTX 6000. I seriously struggled to find something new, and I assumed that the Guest Network Pro would be that feature, but no. The GTX 6000 supports it as well. Same as the new VLAN implementation. I don't know, perhaps there are some other differences that weren't immediately obvious, so let's put the wireless router to the test and see how it performs. The Pro version borrowed the design of the original RTX 88U, which in turn was heavily inspired by the RTAC 88U. And I do have the first two routers on my desk, so you can see for yourself just how little has changed over the years. What I did like about the design of the router was that there are multiple status LEDs, instead of the usual single multicolor LED found on Wi-Fi mesh systems. The antennas are removable and we do get a couple of 2.5 gigabit ports, the rest are limited to 1 gigabit only. Also note that you can set up dual one using the aforementioned 2.5 gigabit ports, as well as use the one port with any of the other ports or even the USB port, as long as you connect a Wi-Fi dongle. What I didn't like was the size of the router, it just occupies too much space, and that you can't mount the device on the wall at all. Nope. Now let's talk about the thermal management. The RTX 88U Pro does rely on passive cooling, which is expected, and as you can see, it seems that the heat sinks do a decent job at pushing the heat out. I usually do open up every router that I test to see its components, and I did make a separate detailed video for the RTX 88U Pro teardown. But to keep this video as short as possible, these are the main components, and I have also added a comparison table with a couple of other routers. We already know that the AX88U Pro is almost identical to the GT AX6000, but it's interesting to see how similar the AX88U is to the AX86U. The Asus RT AX88U Pro has pretty much all of the main Wi-Fi features expected from a Wi-Fi 6 router. I have added a list that Asus made available on their website with the main Wi-Fi features and almost all of them require compatible client devices, otherwise the RTX 88U Pro will perform very close to a Wi-Fi 5 router. There's OFDMAA which can help make the data transmission more efficient by ensuring the decongestion of the network. It does so by dividing the channel into resource units which are then grouped and sent to the client devices simultaneously. Just be aware that you do need to enable this feature in the professional section since it's disabled by default. There's also multi-user MIMO for serving multiple client devices at the same time, as well as the beamforming feature which points the signal directly at the client devices, limiting any needless broadcasting in areas with no receivers. I also see that the AI mesh is supported and it better be considering that it's one of the best features that ACE has developed so far. And it does mean that you can extend the Wi-Fi using different ASUS routers, which can be older and even from different Wi-Fi standards. I also know that there is support for the 160MHz channel bandwidth, but I did have some issues with the DFS channel. Anything above 100 was a no-go, and I did check every available setting which could influence it, but nothing. The router simply refused to broadcast it. I know, I know, there may have been a meteor station or a military one or something similar, but other routers would broadcast the 5 GHz Wi-Fi on the same channel. So it's just the Asus RTX 88U Pro reacting to something I seem to have no control over. I don't deny the usefulness of the single client iPerf tests, since they can show what you can achieve in good or close to ideal conditions. 
but it doesn't truly portray how the wireless router performs when multiple client devices are connected at the same time. I am aware that there are some multi-client stress tests available, but which unfortunately cost a fortune to purchase and to run. Obviously, I can't afford them. But the open source community is awesome as always and I found a good suite of tools called NetHydra, which does include NetBurn. All of these tools are developed by Mr. Jim Salter. And I have included a link in the description towards these tools on GitHub. This way I can simulate various types of traffic on multiple client devices at the same time. I can check if the Asus RT AX88 Pro can handle 5 simultaneous 1080p or even 4K streaming services. And I can add some browsing in the mix as well as voice IP. The computer that's connected to the router using an Ethernet cable is a server device and it has the following specs. As for the client devices, I suppose some would argue that it's better to have them all identical. But due to serious budget restraints, I only have a couple of identical Wi-Fi 6 laptops, a Wi-Fi 6e PC and the other two are Wi-Fi 5 devices. You can see their specifications in the following table. The tests will be conducted in a detached building with very little interference from neighboring Wi-Fi networks, but I will add the measured signal attenuation to get a better idea about the signal strength of each client device. The multi-client stress tests will be run while the client devices are connected to the 5 GHz Wi-Fi network that's set to use the 80 MHz channel bandwidth. But what exactly are those percentages in the graphics? I think it's better to understand what's going on by checking out the two following graphs. One shows the latency experienced when 5 client devices demand 1080p streaming at the same time, the other is for the 4K streaming. I have set the limit to 150 milliseconds since I think that this is a decent point until the viewing experience degrades way too much. And with the 1080p streaming we see that the client devices remain under this limit most of the time. Two client devices did experience spikes but less than 1% of the time, you can see the 99% point. And I suppose that this means that it can be considered negligible. As expected, things do change with the 4K streaming and we do see that pretty much all client devices do go above the previously set limit for about 1% of the time. What this means is that occasionally there will be some buffering. I don't doubt that both simultaneous 1080p and 4K streaming on multiple client devices will put a strain on any wireless router, but I think that the Asus RT AX88 U Pro can handle more, so I decided to run browsing sessions alongside 1080p streaming. And after the test was done, I reran it with a sprinkle of voice IP but on a single client to simulate a fairly realistic scenario. In any case, for the simulation of web browsing, I limited the throughput to 1 megabyte. And I made sure that I ran 12 concurrent 128 kilobyte files, which should behave as the average page on the internet, where multiple resources are loaded at the same time. Kind of. When compared to the 1080p streaming only test, we can see an overall rise in latency, with the Zimmer board being the most upset, but even so, when a couple of client devices went above the set limit just for a very brief moment. So you should be able to stream 1080p on 5 client devices and do some speedy browsing on other clients at the same time with very little penalty on the streaming. The browsing graph reveals that all client devices stay below the 1.5 seconds limit. Just be aware that faraway clients can act up from time to time. But adding voice IP on a single client did slightly change things. As for the browsing graph, we see a couple of client devices, both Wi-Fi 5, getting very close to the higher limit, which is 1.5 seconds, while the Moody Wi-Fi 60 PC crosses it, even if only briefly for 1% of the time. Might require a page reload, or maybe not, depending on how patient you are. The router did well with the simultaneous 4K streaming on 5 clients. Too well. We need to change that by adding browsing in the mix. While before, pretty much all of the wireless client devices managed to remain underneath the 150 milliseconds limit, we now see that only a few of them stayed below it for 90% of the time. This means that for about 5% of the time the clients will buffer, so not really the best performance. But don't get me wrong, this is a stress test which will most likely not be experienced in real life. Moving to the browsing graph, we see that only one client gets above one second, while all others were fairly decent. So any furious web browsing person will be happy with the performance. 
In this section we will test how well the Asus RTX 88U Pro performs running iPerf on a single client device. And yes, I know that most other creators that actually bother testing routers do something similar, or at least I hope so. But I have added a tiny twist. While the usual way is to show the measured values at various spots in the house, for example the throughput between the server PC and the client laptop which is 45 feet away, I actually decided to take the signal attenuation into account. This means that you should be able to reproduce these results not based on distance, since it's not a very good metric, but on the signal strength. For the following section there isn't much explanation needed, so just pause the video at any time to see the test results. I have decided to add another new element, a long-term presentation of the throughput between the server PC and the compatible Wi-Fi client device. I got two separate set of values, one from using the 80 MHz channel bandwidth, the other from using the 160 MHz channel bandwidth. And of course I put it against the GT AX6000 and the older RT AX88U. The Asus RT AX80U Pro does have a single dedicated WAN port, but it is also possible to configure the 2.5 Gigabit LAN port to act as a secondary one. If you want to do so yourself, go to Advanced Settings, choose One, and then select Dual One. Enable it under Basic Config, choose the primary one, and under Secondary One, choose the 2.5 Gigabit port. It is also possible to choose any other LAN port as well. Then it's necessary to choose the mode, and I set it to failover to allow the router to move to the secondary one link if the primary one fails. And then you can enable the fallback option as well, so in case the primary one link goes live, it will switch back from the secondary one. To see the switch between the two one interfaces in action, I ping two websites continuously and simultaneously. At some point I disconnected the cable from the primary one and as you can see the Asus RT AX88U Pro was very upset, needing about 3-4 seconds to switch to the secondary one connection. Then after reconnecting the primary one cable the switch happened more quickly, needing only a second. Obviously it's not on par with the far more expensive dual one gateways on the market, but it's still a decent performance for a home suitable wireless router. With the emergence of the Pro series, Asus has added a new section to the LAN area called VLAN. And the RT AX88U Pro does allow you to create VLAN profiles which can then be assigned to a specific port. But while it's good practice to isolate and secure devices that are connected via cable from the main network, which can include the older printers, we do need to address the Wi-Fi connected client devices as well. And this is handled by the Guest Network Pro. It's an incredibly simple system where you can choose which type of Wi-Fi network you want to create. For example, I choose to make an IoT network to isolate all my smart devices from the main network and all I had to do was give it a name, a security pass key, select the Wi-Fi band and, if I wanted to go deeper, it is possible to apply it to multiple other AI mesh devices. And you can also schedule the access to the network. I also need to mention the Instant Guard app, which makes connecting to your home network from outside a breeze. But I will focus a bit more on this feature in another video. I have already went over some features from the web-based interface, but there is also an app available as well. And on the home page it's possible to see some status info, the AI mesh nodes and there is even the possibility to enable the game mode, a feature usually found on ROG routers. The Insight and Family tabs are the same as in the other Asus routers, the latter making it very easy to set up age-based profiles where you can set which content will be available and which will be blocked. The Guest Network Pro is available here as well as on the web-based interface, although it seems that the VLAN is not. You can use the AI protection to scan for vulnerabilities and it is very nice to see that the IPS is still available. The OpenAT feature lets you set up port forwarding rules for online gaming and the QoS remains more basic than on the web-based browser interface. Before wrapping things up, let's also have a look at the power consumption of the router. So does the Asus RT AX80 Pro does have a place on the market when we have the GT AX6000? I'm still not sure. 
Yes, the single client performance has revealed that the RTX 88U Pro is better, but this only means that I have to retest the GTX 6000 to see if it performs the same. The stress tests show that the RTX 88U Pro is a solid device and the new VLAN plus the guest network Pro are far from being some gimmick features. So in the end, if I were to choose between the Asus RTX 88U Pro and the GTX 6000, I would choose whichever is the cheapest. This is the first wireless router review in what I expect to be a very long series. And the next device that I will test, or more like retest, is the GTX 6000. Just so that all of the references that I made in this video actually make sense. Of course, please feel free to suggest any other router, access point or mesh system that you want me to test in the comments below. Thank you for watching and see you next time.